Let's say you're walking through a field, a beautiful meadow that stretches as far as the eye can see. And you're walking along, all peaceful, and then suddenly you hear a rustling in the bushes. And you start to investigate, and you walk over, and you realize the rustling was Justin Bieber, who's been frolicking around in the woods, kind of brooding over his most recent breakup with Selena Gomez and other things that are equally important. And you wonder, what's going to happen to Justin Bieber? Not because of his lifestyle or choices, but because there's a giant cloud over his head. And you know that dark clouds mean thunder, and that also means lightning. So, will he be safe? Will he not? Well, that answer may come from understanding electricity. Now, let's say that Bieber's not alone in the field. Let's say that there's also a tree, and the tree is about the same height as Justin Bieber. Does this increase his chances of survival? Does it not help him at all? Again, we've got to learn a little bit more about how electricity works before we can figure out if he'll be safe or not. And hopefully this example will help you to stay safe if you're ever in a lightning storm. So let's first acknowledge that everything is made out of matter, which hopefully we can acknowledge most days. And since everything is made out of matter, the ground, which is part of everything, is made out of equal numbers of protons and electrons, positive and negative charges, as are the beebs and the tree. Now the cloud is also made out of protons and electrons, but there's something interesting that happens in storm clouds because of humidity and mixing air pressures and all kinds of interesting meteorological phenomenon that we're not going to get into right now. And that thing that happens is called polarization, which means you've created poles or two opposite sides that do opposite things. So because of the things that we're not going to get into, a storm cloud is polarized, which means all of the electrons end up being built up on the bottom of the cloud. So what does this mean? This means that the electrons, which don't like to be near each other, because again, they are like charges, are forced to be near each other, even though they don't want that. So what they'll do is they'll try and escape. When they try and escape, we'll see that escape and we'll hear it in the form of a lightning strike. So what is a lightning strike and what is electricity? It's moving electrons. This is important. Electricity is the flow of electrons. That's actually why it's called electricity. So. Electricity is the flow of electrons. Now, why does lightning go down? Why doesn't it shoot up out into space? Well, it's because the electrons that are built up want to reach a place that is very, very positive, because electrons like positive charges, protons. So why don't they just go up into the cloud and find the positives that are there? Well, all the meteorological stuff we talked about before is preventing them from going up. So the only way they have to go is down. So what's down? Well, it's the Earth, and the Earth is actually an infinite well of positive and negative charges. It's a very neutral well. So that means the negatives can reach closer to neutrality by going to the Earth. So why does lightning shoot down? Well, it's because all electrons eventually want to reach the ground. That's an important concept in circuitry as well when you're building electrical circuits, and you'll see that later on. But for right now, let's just think about a lightning strike. Now, again, the question was, will Justin Bieber be safe from the lightning strike? Is the tree going to get struck instead? Will the lightning strike neither of them? We're not actually even yet quite ready to answer that question. We still have to analyze a little thing called conductors and insulators. These are two terms that we use in electricity and in heat to describe things that allow things to pass through or things that block movement. Uh, and in this case, we're talking about the movement of electrons for electricity. So. What are some materials that are considered insulators of electricity? Well, there are many examples. The most common are air, and you know air is a good insulator because if you have a plug or a power outlet in the room with you right now, which I'm sure you do if you're watching this on a computer of some kind, uh, then that outlet possibly could electrocute you if air isn't preventing it from doing so. Air is something that prevents electrons from flowing, and so air being in the room with you right now, which I hope it's in the room with you, if not, get out of outer space and go back into your spaceship, uh, air is a really good insulator. It prevents us from getting shocked from just being near an outlet. So air is an example. Another good one is wood. Wood is also an insulator of electricity. It doesn't block electricity, but it does slow it down and prevent it from moving, at least quickly. Another example is rubber. Another would be plastic. And finally, glass. So all five of these slow down electrons. That makes them insulators. Conductors of electricity are things like metals, water, and because we're made mostly of water, human flesh. Ugh. Well, yeah, we're made mostly out of water. And specifically, it's the things that are in water, uh, the impurities, the ions that conduct electricity. You rarely ever find pure water. But fun fact, pure H2O is actually not really a conductor of electricity. It does basically nothing. It becomes an insulator. But most water that you find is a conductor. So please don't test your luck with water being a conductor of electricity. Take me at my word. It's always going to be a conductor. 
So with that in mind, now that we have this idea, the question remains, is Justin Bieber going to get struck by lightning, or is the tree going to get struck by lightning, or is neither, or both? And the answer is, as you may have guessed, da -da -da -da. Justin Bieber will get struck by lightning, and he'll be very upset about that, because he will have become what's called the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance is the path that the electrons can choose to take that will require the least amount of effort, where they will meet the least amount of what we call resistance. So the path of least resistance is the easiest path for them to take. And Justin Bieber, unfortunately, being made out of flesh rather than wood, was the path of least resistance. So is it too late now to say sorry? Apparently, Justin. Apparently. Here's some uh, fun notes just before we end, because that's basically the whole idea of conductors and insulators. When I was a child, I watched a show called Pokemon, which I believe is still on as of 2016. It's in some kind of season I've never seen. Uh, the science I learned from watching Pokemon. So what did I learn from just the first few episodes of this breakout series, which is still much beloved? Number one, I learned as a child, before I ever took a physics class, that humans are conductors of electricity. Now I learned this because in the show they established that Pikachu could hurt Ash Ketchum by electrifying him. And so that made me think, oh, okay, so humans are susceptible to electricity. Interesting, good to know, my 10-year-old self. And then I also learned that water is a conductor of electricity. And as I discussed, pure H2O may not be, but you never really find pure H2O sitting around. It's always got stuff in it, and that makes it a good conductor. Uh, and I learned that this was a fact, that water conducts electricity, because the water Pokemon, such as Squirtle, were weak against electric types. And that was confirmed, again, in the Game Boy game that I played for Pokemon. And so that was another little tidbit of science I learned from cartoons. And then finally, three, I learned that rubber is an insulator against electricity. And I learned this from the show, when Ash Ketchum was trying to reason with Pikachu, but Pikachu was being kind of a jerk to him when they first met. It took them a whole episode to become friends. Uh, and Ash got kind of sick and tired of getting electrified, so he wore his mother's rubber dish gloves, and that prevented him from getting shocked by Pikachu. So the whole reason I bring this up is you can't actually get a good dosage of science from different cartoons and movies and things. you got to take it with a grain of salt because, as we all know, there are no such thing as Pokemon except for like two or three of them. Um, but in general, don't shy away from your cartoons and your TV shows and your movies because they can't actually teach you a little bit. Who'd have thought? Gotta catch them all.